Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. We got a lot of stuff to talk about today. The U.S. Department of Defense just issued an 80-page warning to the world that basically nobody is paying attention to that we need to talk about today. And there's some very funny stuff going on in the media that we need to discuss. Now, guys, I want to say right off the hop that I greatly appreciate the fact that you come here day in and day out and give your hard-earned time and attention to me. I want you to know that I do not take it for granted. I try not to half-ass this stuff, even though I'm in a car or in front of a, a screen, which is kind of tacky. Look, we are working on doing a lot more high production stuff on the channel, stuff that we, we are accustomed to doing. It's been shelved for the last few weeks to a variety of reasons. My audiovisual team is somewhat disbanded right now, but I don't want you to think we're resting on our laurels. We have a tsunami of high quality premium content which is just geared towards general emergency preparedness not talking about any of this current event stuff because that is what's most important information is nothing without action and we need to take action now something very suspicious is going on with respect to the nuclear escalation that we're currently seeing in the fact that we're not hearing about it at all you see, back during the Cold War, during the peak years in the medium-range missile crisis of Europe, there were people protesting throughout that time. There was a lot of discourse about nuclear escalation, the potential for nuclear war. There was movies made out of it. Now we're at a point where we're arguably in order of magnitude at greater risk and there's literally crickets. There's no word of this in the media whatsoever. There are literally 100 data points right now that indicate that we're at the highest risk of nuclear conflict in history. We also have simultaneous exercises, nuclear exercises happening during a war in which the United States military now and the Russians are spitting distance from one another engaged in a high intensity conflict on the european continent uh, all of those things provide all of the ingredients for a recipe for disaster for nuclear disaster and there is a complete paucity of information within the mainstream media about this nuclear scare and we have to ask ourselves why because the media is always going to seize and capitalize on any sort of uh threatening thing because it gets clicks, right? And they're always going to magnify and blow out of proportion certain threats. Like, and typically the threats that they blow out of proportion aren't the real threats, right? They're going to blow out of proportion these things which are, you know, they're, they're definitely risky, but they're not uh, nearly as apocalyptic as they make them out to be. Whereas real threats like we're facing now, they're oddly silent about and they minimize this. So why is this the case? You know, what, what, what would get more clicks right now than for the media to expose the nuclear attention that is going on right now? I mean, the, there would, everybody would be fixated on that issue, but for some reason they're not doing it. And I think I know why. It's because it is actually a real threat. And there's some sort of top-down processing going on here, which is really limiting the exposition of this issue. You're, you're seeing it talked about in the more long-form media content, like in the New York Times or, or Newsweek. They pay a little bit of lip service to the issue, but not nearly enough. Uh, in fact, it's the farthest thing from people's minds. You, you really got to go down. If you, if you go on to NBC or CNN or Fox News, it's really but a footnote on the page. It's very brief. And it's not because people wouldn't want to attend to something like this. The media selectively attends to whatever it wants to, it seems. And it seems like they are, for some reason, foregoing an opportunity to, to capitalize on this issue. And this is an industry, like the entire mainstream media conglomerate industry, is completely unscrupulous at every other turn. So why is it that they're not seizing upon this opportunity to get the clicks from the public? And the reason why is because it's an actual legitimate threat. 
Okay, the reason why is because we're at a very, very high DEF CON level, meaning l low DEF CON level. I always didn't understand why it was, went from DEF CON 5 to DEF CON 1. It should just, you know, be an escalatory thing. Anyways, we're at, I, I would definitely say we're at DEF CON 2. You have a major high intensity conflict going on in Europe between nuclear superpowers. That's, and you have both doing a simultaneous nuclear exercise at the same time. That's as high as it gets uh, before going to the point of imminent uh, nuclear war. So for whatever reason, people are being kept in oblivion as with these curated algorithms and this very tightly controlled media for some reason. And instead we're subdued and pacified with all these other types of distractions. And it appears as though as we approach the culmination of all these crises, be they ecological, environmental, climate-based, uh, contagion-based, you know, biological contagions, whether they're, they're conflict-based. As we approach the culmination of all these things, there's more and more distractions. So there's less and less of a chance that we're actually going to engage and potentially do something about it. Now, Putin today has warned that we're likely in the most dangerous uh, decade since World War II. Okay, so you have a situation in which the United States right now is doing this mission creep into Ukraine, which is not being called attention to. And I think the reason why they're not uh, talking up the nuclear scare is because they want to do the mission creep thing is that they they want to uh, it, it if people knew the risks the the nuclear risks they would be protesting the war that's the main reason i i should have said that right from the get-go sorry it took me so long to get to that point but i think that's essentially what it is it's that they they don't want to call attention to anything um that might scare people out of their support for this conflict. And that, unfortunately, right now, is what any talk about nuclear weapons, that's the effect it is going to have. That's the only effect it could possibly have. It will not increase our support for the conventional uh, supply of, of weaponry and support to the Ukrainians. It will only diminish it. So I'm guessing that that's the reason why this isn't being blasted from the rooftops, even though, you know, the, the degree to which the media is ignoring it is the degree to which it is actually important. OK, so the Department of Defense, like I said today, released this uh, national defense strategy. OK, and uh, get my thumbnail shot there. There we go. And uh it's an 80 page document which uses all the the fancy buzzwords to disguise the fact that they're <laughs> they need to do a complete overhaul of their strategic arms so we're talking about land-based forces sea-based forces air-based forces and supplemental capabilities so they're going to be putting immense amounts of resources now but they're doing this under the radar because this should be this should be mainstream news but it's not okay and uh what this what this tells me is that they finally realize that holy crap the russians in particular have been for the last 20 years investing in modernizing their not only their uh, strategic nuclear arsenal but also their missile defense capabilities and that we are years behind where they are and that if a nuclear war were to happen today we would likely lose and i know a lot of people don't like to hear that and a lot of people who are not aware and who are sold on this myth of american military superiority in which they are superior in many ways but when it comes to intercontinental nuclear conflict they simply are not We've gone over the many reasons as to why the U.S. military is deficient in that respect, not in all respect. They have the best planes, they have the best aircraft carriers, the best lots of things. But when it comes to big FU nuclear weapons, unfortunately, they're just not uh, world class anymore. So they're talking about how they're going to 
build new bombers. They're going to build new ICBM missiles. They're going to build new um, submarines and all this stuff to get prepared for what Putin is saying is going to be the most dangerous decade of our lives. And when Lloyd Austin presented this at a press conference, he used the word acute many, many times that Russia was an acute threat to the U.S. military. Now, again, you have them speaking out of two sides of their mouth because you say that the Russians are an acute threat to the United States, an acute strategic threat, meaning that there's a potential here that the Russians could wipe us off the face of the earth. At the same time, we're not hearing much about this at all in the mainstream media. And then at the same time, we have this mission creep into Ukraine. Now, some people took offense when I said yesterday that the 101st Airborne is going to be wholly ineffective against the entirety of the Russian army. And uh, like I say, maybe a lot of people don't understand the, the nature of the high intensity conflict that is going on on the ground there compared to some of the campaigns that, that this uh, division has partook in in the past. Obviously, you know, if you go back to World War II, it's a different story. But every time since then, it's been more low intensity. They've had a full spectrum dominance over the, the air and the sea. And this is an entirely different conflict. Okay, there's a light infantry unit. They don't have the, the armor that they need to defend themselves. They, they would be blown out of the sky if they tried to fly in there in helicopters or planes. So this, this seems, it must be symbolic, but I wouldn't put it past them still to try to some way work their way into Ukraine somehow. I think they're just sort of testing the fences right now to see what can happen. And now again, well, this national defense strategy is something which is projected out to the year 2027 in order to uh, modernize the strategic arms forces and beyond. This, this is still, uh, you know, that, that might make a person think that, oh, we have lots of time because they're not taking the threat that seriously. Well, I think it's, it's more due to the fact that they're just scrambling to, to catch up. And that they have to do something. I'm not saying that the nuclear threat is imminent, but it's we're, we are at the highest risk that we've ever been at before. And I think I've beat that horse to death enough. So I would encourage people, if you missed my video that I did yesterday, go and check out this book, uh, Nuclear War Survival Skills. Make sure you get the 2022 edition. It's not waterproof and it's not built to withstand uh, nuclear war like the original one was, but it's going to get you all the information you need. Again, cross-reference and uh, fact-check everything and get different opinions. Remember, a lot of this stuff is hypothetical and we don't really know and understand the nature of modern uh, nuclear weapons. And Again, guys, don't base your life around this stuff. Still go out, live your life. Uh, this is just but one of the many scenarios that we as preppers should be ready to endure. There are countless other potential ways that uh, our lives are going to be compromised in the not so distant future. Let me know if you've had a chance to look at the 2022 US Department of Defense National Strategy. I'm gonna do a more in-depth video breakdown of it in the near future once my AV team gets back on the payroll. And uh, yeah, we're gonna take a deeper dive into this and we're going to bring on some guests who can maybe help us expound on this a little bit more. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you enjoy the video. And if you need any sort of emergency preparedness equipment, you can check out the link in the comment section below or in the description. Thanks, bye.